Thank you. This is a special event tonight because it's in honor of uh, Martin Gardner, who died several years ago. But uh, Monday, the 21st of October, would have been his 99th birthday. So representing the group that is very active in promoting what Martin Gardner stood for as a math writer and a, and a science writer and all the other endeavors that he had, I'd like to introduce at this point Bill Ritchie, the CEO of Think Fun, uh, to say a few words. He's been involved with the Gathering for Gardeners and so on for a number of years now. Bill. Uh, Great. Welcome, everybody. I just want to uh, welcome you all on behalf of the Gathering for Gardener Foundation, and in particular, the Celebration of Mind Committee. Um, after Martin died four years ago, uh, the G Gardner Foundation got together and said that um, well, they actually t had talked to Martin uh, for a couple of years before he passed away. And he agreed to this, that uh, he didn't want anything in his own honor, but he was happy to have us every year around the time of his birth. Uh, uh, October 21st, um, have a series of celebrations of mine, parties around the world, and connect them with a worldwide map and have everybody, have everybody uh, be part of this. Um, uh, the MAA has been uh, four years, for the last four years, having celebrations of mine uh, here in Washington, and it's been fabulous. This is the fourth one. This is an official celebration of mine party now, and uh, I want to uh, welcome everybody on behalf of that. Uh, so that's what I have to say, other than to say uh, I am an Art Benjamin fan. I have been for a long time, and I am thrilled to have you here, and uh, this is going to be a great evening. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Um, I think uh, there are two things I want to say before I get to the business of introducing Art Benjamin. Uh, one of them is um, this is in honor of Martin Gardner. And one of the special events coming up in the coming year is Mathematics Awareness Month. That happens every April. For April 2014, and this is the year of Martin Gardner's 100th anniversary of his birthday, uh, the theme chosen for it is Mathematics, Magic, and Mystery. It's based on the title of a book that Martin Gardner wrote with that title. Uh, and that was before he started his Scientific American Mathematical Games column. This was you know, things that he'd been writing and thinking about well beforehand. So that's the theme for Mathematics Awareness Month, and you'll be hearing a lot more about it as, as we proceed. The second thing I want to mention is, as uh, Michael said, as you leave, uh, you'll have a chance to meet with Art and also take a look at the DVDs that he's produced. These are part of the Great Courses series. Uh, and as Michael said, he, he's generously donated the proceeds from that uh, to uh, our effort. But we also have uh, a special gift for all of you uh, when you leave, uh, courtesy of Think Fun, sort of a, a puzzling item of some sort. Part of this is the tradition of both Martin Gardner and his own generosity. And at the previous gatherings for Gardner, there was a sharing of puzzles and a sharing of information, a sharing of games, all sorts of things. And we continue that tradition here. When you came in, uh, there were issues of, of uh, Math Horizons uh, and puzzles of various sorts laid out. And even at this, le I, I noticed there were a few, some new ones there. So check when you leave uh, for any new uh, uh, puzzles and so on. So, but that's all part of the spirit of this. All right. To come to Art Benjamin, uh, he's a professor of uh, mathematics at Harvey Mudd College in California. Uh, he grew up in the Cleveland area. He was uh, an undergraduate at Carnegie Mellon University, appropriate for being at the Carnegie Institution of si for Science here now. Uh, he did his graduate work at Johns Hopkins University, not too far away from here, uh, in operations research and optimization, things like that. Uh, at the same time, he had a long-standing interest in magic, uh, card tricks, uh, number tricks, and so on. And nowadays, he is both a full math professor, being very active in a variety of ways, and also uh, very much a magician at, at various levels. Uh, I do have some props with me because I need to give you a sense of some of the things he's done, particularly for the MAA. He was co-editor of our student magazine, Math Horizons. Uh, you have a copy of a later edition of, of this magazine. Uh, his term was a bit earlier, but this was a special issue 
guess what, on math magic. And there was another issue on games, gambling, and magic. And so uh, that was also part of uh, uh, what he did in his five years as co-editor of Math Horizons. Uh, he's done some books for us just to show that he can be very serious, although these books are actually very expository and fun to read for mathematics books. Uh, proofs that really count uh, are the art of combinatorial proof. And then more recently, co-editor of a collection. He was a co-author of, of the Count's book, Biscuits of Number Theory. Uh, which is an interesting collection of number theory papers, uh, and there's more. But the more popular book, some years ago, he put out a book called Mathematics, How to Look Like a Genius Without Really Trying. <laughs> now, that book has evolved into this one. This is the current edition, Secrets of Mental Math, The Mathemagician's Guide to Lightning Calculation and Amazing Math Tricks. And that's Art Benjamin's talk for tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ivers. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Bill. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Art Benjamin, and I am a mathemagician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and magic to do something I call mathemagics. But before I get started, I've got a quick question for the audience. By any chance, did anyone happen to bring with them this evening a calculator? If you have a calculator with you, perhaps on your phone, you're comfortable using it, raise your hand. All right, I see one over here, and two, and um, OK, one of you over there, three, and maybe one other, other person with a calculator. Uh, all right, four. Would the four of you please join me up on stage with your calculators? Let's give them all a nice round of applause. Over on this side. Terrific. Are, are one of you coming? I saw your hand up. Go. Yeah. No? Oh, OK. Over on this side. And one more coming down. And one more round of applause for our brave volunteers. Now, since I have not had the chance to work with these calculators, I need to make sure that they are all working properly. Would somebody get us started by giving us a two-digit number, please? How about a two-digit number? 22. 22. And another two-digit number, please. 58. Multiply 22 times 58. Make sure you get 1,276 exactly, or the calculators are not working. Are all of your calculators working? 1,276, 1,276. Give them a round of applause. This one is broken. Is yours work? It's broken now. Is it broken? Yes, it's not working now. It's not working now. I have that effect on calculators, I find. They just get so intimidated. So here, I'll give you, I'll give you one of mine here. Here you go. You can use that one. All right. Now, um, now, I notice that took some of you just a little bit of time to get the answer. I'll give you a shortcut for multiplying even faster on the calculator. There's something called the square of a number, which most of you know is taking a number and multiplying it by itself. For instance, 5 squared would be 25. 6 squared would be 36. 73 squared would be something bigger, right. Now, on most of these calculators, you have shortcut buttons, squaring buttons, that will allow you to do the problem in one step, right? Oh, so well, all you have to do, so make, you make sure you can square numbers on these calculators, right? You make sure you can square five or six or whatever. What I'm going to try and do now is to square in my head four two-digit numbers faster than they can do on their calculators, even using the shortcut method. What I'll ask is four people here in the second row, one, two, three, four, each yell out a two-digit number. And if you would square the first, the second, the third, and the fourth one, I will try and race you to the answer. So uh, quickly, a two-digit number, please. 79. 79 squared, OK, next. 61, next. 52, next. Or next. <laughs> 53. Would you call out your answers, please? Go ahead. What did you get? 3,721. Oh, you, 3,721? 6,241. 6,241. 2,704. And finally? 2,809. Give them a round of applause. 
let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square some three digit numbers this time. I won't even write these down, I'll just call them out as they're called out to me. Anyone at all call out a three digit number, anyone on our panel verify the answer. If I get the answer right, give me a thumbs up, make sure everyone sees it. If I make a mistake, let me know and I'll try and fix it. A three digit number, anyone? 371 is 137,641. Yes, good. How about another, another three digit number? Uh, sir, three digits. 789. 789 is 622,521. 622,521. Yes, good. How about what I hear over here? 936. Oh, that's a harder one. 876,096. Yes, good. How about another, what was that? 265 is 70,225, 70225, one more three digit number? One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, it's too easy, 15,129. Thank you very much. <laughs> easy as one, two, three, as they say. Let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square a four digit number this time. Now I'm not gonna beat you to the answer on this one, but I will try to get the answer right. To make this a little bit more random, let's take, um, how about the fourth row? If I can get the first four of you to call out a single digit between zero and nine, that will be the four digit number that I'll square. Eight. eight. Five. five seven. seven. Two. two. Eight, five, seven, two. This will take me a little bit of time, so bear with me. Seventy-three million. Four hundred seventy-nine thousand one hundred and twenty-four. No, no. Oh shoot! No, no. Oh, eighty-four. Was it just the last two digits? Wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs> Forgot the last two digits. Should I try another one? I, I hate messing up. All right. Um, I do sometimes make mistakes, like picking the wrong people. So let's uh, <laughs> let's try the row behind you. If I can get the first four of you, call out a single digit. Five. Seven, seven, five, seven, seven, eight. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Thirty-three million. So, so, so far, so good. Yeah. That would be like a good estimate. Okay. <laughs> Three hundred eighty-five thousand. Oh, yeah. two hundred and eighty-four. Yes. Good. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, I would attempt to square a five-digit number, and I can, but unfortunately, some calculators cannot. <laughs> yeah, I think yours can, right. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> In the meanwhile, let me conclude the first part of my show by trying something a little trickier. Let's take that last four-digit number, 5778. Would you each enter that number on your calculator? And instead of squaring it this time, I'd like you to take that number and multiply it by any three digit number that you'd like. But don't tell me what you're multiplying by, just multiply it by any random three digit number. So you should have as an answer either a six digit or probably a seven digit number. How many digits do you have in your answer, six or seven? Seven, 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 seven. 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 Is there any possible way that I could know what seven digit numbers they have? Say no. Good. Then I shall attempt the impossible, or at least the improbable. What I'd like each of you to do is to call out for me any six of your seven digits, any six of them, in any order you'd like. One digit at a time, I shall try and determine the digit you've left out. So starting with your seven digit number, call out any six of them, please. Three, seven, nine, six, one, five. Did you eat, ooh, I heard too many numbers there. Uh, start again, call out six of your seven digits. Three, seven, nine, six, four, six. Did you leave out the number one? Yes. Good, that's one. You've got a seven digit number, any six of yours, loud and clear. Did you leave out the number six? Correct. That's two. You've got a seven digit number. Any six of yours in any order? Five, nine, three, six, seven. I've only heard five numbers. Nine. Thank you. Did you leave out the number six? 
That's three. The odds of me getting all four of these right by pure guessing would be one in 10,000, 10 to the fourth power. Okay, finally, my well-dressed gentleman here, call it any six of yours, really scramble them up this time. Three, zero, eight, seven, four, three. Did you leave out the number two? Correct. Great, and let's give all four of these people a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, well done. Oh, I'll take that, yes. You, you know, you could have run off to my phone and I wouldn't have even known it. <laughs> For my next number, I'd like to present something we mathemagicians refer to as magic squares. Now, how many of you out there do Sudoku? Magic squares are kind of like Sudoku on steroids. <laughs> now, I have done such an extensive study on magic squares that I'd like to create one for all of you right before your very eyes. But for this, I'll need another assistant, someone here I do not know, and let's see. All right, how about you, what's your name? Skylar. Let's give Skylar a nice round of applause. Come on up here, Skylar. Now, Skyler's spelling was not my best subject. Is it S-C-U-Y-L-E-R? Or did I miss an H? K-Y-L-E-R. I really messed that. Okay, S-K-Y-L-E-R, right? Yeah. Skyler, let me ask you another question, and if it's too personal, I can change the question. Skyler, would you be willing to share with us your birthday, including the year? June 8th, 2000. That means yes. Okay, June 8th. 2000 is your birthday? Great. Now, Skylar, if we were to add the numbers in your birthday together, let's see, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 20 plus 0 is 34, then 34 becomes your magic number. What I'm going to try and do now, Skylar, is to fill out this box in such a way as to get your magic number appearing here. Wait a minute, I'm going to change that around here. Make, I, I see something, something special I can do here. Okay. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here. One more. Um, something, something is not, not working out for me. I'm going to try this. Uh, wait, 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 I, this is, oh, 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 I see, I see where, I see where I messed up. Okay, hang on. I always carry a, a backup. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. So we have six, eight, two thousand, and once again, 34 becomes your magic number. Here we go. So Skylar, what I'm going to try and do is to fill out this box in such a way as to get your magic number appearing here as much as I possibly can. This will take me a couple of seconds, so bear with me here. I think that works. Skylar, would you choose for us any row? Row number two, three, or four, which would you like? Four. four. All right, class, together. Eight plus four is 12, plus two is 14, plus 20 is 34. The others were six, 14, 34, 34, 19, 20, 25, 34, 1, 22, 29, 34. Would you choose a column, Skylar? One, two, three, or four? Two. Two. All right, class. Eight plus one is nine, plus 21 is 30, plus four is 34. The others were six, 25, 26, 34, 20, 25, 32, 34, 0, 9, 14, 34. How about that? Now, Skylar, I am not through with you. I decided that since this was your magic square, based on your birthday, at no extra charge, I would give you these diagonals as well. Check it out here. 8 plus 21 is 29, plus 5 and 0 is 34, 6, 7, 14, 34. But I didn't stop there either. I decided since this was for Skylar, wouldn't it be great if we could get these four in the center to add up as well? Check it out here. 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 7 is 13, plus 21 is 34. But did I stop there? Did I stop there? No, Skylar, you may have noticed. I put a little extra attention in that corner. I did that so I could get these four squares. 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 1 is 15, plus 19 is 34 to add up. And I figured, heck, let's have a party. We may as well get this group of four. 20, 29, 34, 1, 22, 26, 34, 7, 12, 32, 34. But did I stop there? No, 
I said Skyler wouldn't be happy unless we got this group of four, 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 this group of four. Now I have to apologize, Skyler. I was not able to get this group of four nor that group of four to add up, but I had to do it that way if I was going to get these four in the corners. I knew that would be important to you. Six, six, twenty-six, thirty-four. But wait. <laughs> Here's the cool part. Skylar, not only do those four numbers in the corners add to 34, if you look at them closely, you'll see we have six, eight, 2000. I was able to give you your birthday twice. I thought you'd like that. So please keep this as a souvenir for me. Let's all give Skylar a nice round of applause. Thank you, Skylar, very much. Speaking of birthdays, by any chance, does anyone here happen to know the day of the week that they were born on? If you think you know your actual birthday and you're willing to reveal it, raise your hand. All right, Susan, I, don't, I, don't, I know you, but I don't know your birthday. So what year, if I may? 1946. 1946. And what month? November. November what? 28th. Was that a Thursday? It was. It was Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who, who else? <laughs> That's right. Uh, who, yes. What year? Uh, 2000. 2000. And the month? September. Uh, September what? Four. Four. Was that a Saturday? Was that a Sunday? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I was at a Monday. It was a Monday. I'm, I'm, I got my codes mixed up. Okay. Um, I know. It sounds like I'm guessing now, right? I can give you the day of the week within three days, right? So, okay. <laughs> uh, let's try someone else. Uh, Ruby, yes. What year? 2005. 2005. And what month? December. December, you said? December what? 23rd. 23rd. Was that a Friday? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, who else? Uh, all right. Way in the back, uh, second row from the back. Yeah, that's you. What year? 2003, May 18th, was that a Sunday? Uh, anybody here who perhaps does not know the day of the week they were born but would like to find out? <laughs> okay, all right, I see your hand up. Now, of course, if you don't know what it is, I could just make up an answer and you'd probably believe me. Uh, but I don't want you to have to do that. And nowadays there are apps for everything. So here, let me, let me give you one of mine so one or both of you can check this out. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, what year, first of all? 1965. So type in the year 1965. And what month? March, March what? 10. 10. Was that a Wednesday? And I'll get, it is a Wednesday. I'll tell you what, as long as you have the app with you, do me a favor. Let's turn to a year outside of the 1900s. You could go as far into the future as the year 3000. You can go as far into the past as 1600. Don't go below 1600, because then we get off the Gregorian calendar, and that trips me up. So um, what year would you like? Any year from 1600 to 3000? 1845. 1845. So type in the year 1845. And uh, what, what month? August. August what? 17th. 17th. Was that a Sunday? Indeed it was. And it was cloudy. I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I saw other hands up. If anyone else wants to find out the day of the week they were born, see me after the show. I will be at the table right outside as you exit, and I'll be more than happy to tell you. Now, folks, if I were performing for a different sort of audience, like, say, at the Magic Castle in Hollywood or Disneyland or a place like that, I might follow this up with other feats of magic and mind. But for an audience such as this one, here for the MAA's Celebration of the Mind, I actually prefer to break the magician's rule and explain to you most of what you've seen me do up here and more. In fact, I, I, I've got hours and hours of stuff that I could show you, but only another 40 minutes up here. So I want to spend that time uh, answering questions of whatever is of most interest to you. And so why don't we get started with that right now? What would you like to, uh, what would you like to know? I saw your hand up first, sir. What's your question? How do I memorize the year codes? Um, are you referring to the figuring out the days of the week? 
Okay, well, since you asked this question, it's one of the more complicated things that I do up here, but since it's early in the evening, everyone's gonna be able to pay attention, and, uh, and, and I'm gonna teach you how to figure out the day of the week of any date that you're interested in. Now, of course, the, the, the year that you're most interested in is probably this year, uh, 2013, and every year gets a code number, and the code number for 2013 is two. So uh, just trust me on that for now. And I will, at the end of this, show you how to, f how to figure out the date for any year, uh, the day of the week for any year, but let's, um, let's start with 2013. Next, we need to memorize a code for every day of the week. This one is, this is very easy. So the, the, the day codes from Monday through Sunday are one, two, three, four, five, six, and Sunday is seven or zero. And this is real easy to remember because Monday is one day. Tuesday is Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, you put the W on your fingers and there's your three. Thursday is four's day. Friday is five day. Saturday is sixer day. Sunday is seven day. Or Sunday is none day. Or if you're Catholic, Sunday is none day. Okay? <laughs> Whichever you'd like. Next, we need a code for every month of the year. And let's see. Now, this is, this is the tricky one. Uh, January, February, June, July, August. And, and the, the codes for the months, it's not like 1 through 12, unfortunately. It goes 622-503-514-624. And to make it worse, on a leap year, the codes for January and February are one less. Instead of being six and two, they're five and one. So just for the leap year, um, you have January and February are different. So that's the code. And there are mnemonics for learning the codes. For instance, January is winter, and winter has six letters. February is, March, is month number two. March two, the beat of the drum. April has five letters. Um, or, if, or April Fools, Fools has five letters. If you have a sandwich, you might want to hold the mayo, because it's better for you. Uh, a June bug, bug has three letters. July is five. If you look in the sky in July, you see a lot of fiverworks up in the sky. As Dan Kalman gave me that one. It was the best I can uh, August is, begins with A. That's a one. September is fall. That has four letters. October, you might think of tricks or treats. Those, or tricks rhymes with six, whatever it takes to remember that. November, you might have two pieces of turkey. Turkey being spelled with a two. And December, the last month, last has four letters. So these are some quick mnemonics for learning the codes. Why they're the codes they are, I'll get into later. But, for, but first, you have to memorize them. Now that you know this, we can now figure out the day of the week of any date this year. So somebody give me a date or a birthday or something, and uh, we'll figure out what day of the week it will be this year. Sir, give us a date. Um, okay, so November 26th, 2013. Here we go. November has a month code of two, the two pieces of turkey. For the 26th, we simply add 26. And for 2013, we always add 2, because I said so. OK. Next, we add these four numbers together. 2 plus 26 plus 2 is 30. Now, if you wanted to, you could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 until you get to 30. But you don't have to do that, because every seven days, the week repeats. So you could subtract any multiple of 7 and that won't change the day of the week. So what's the biggest multiple of 7 I can subtract from 30? 28. 30 minus 28 is 2. And day number 2 is Tuesday. So that date, was it your birthday by chance? Is your birthday this year will be on a Tuesday. OK, let's do one more example. I think everything demands at least two examples. Go ahead. December 3rd. December 3rd. That was my daughter's birthday. And uh, so December 3rd, 2013, okay, so December has a month code of four, the last month, four letters, plus for December 3rd, we add three, and for 2013, we add two, four plus three plus two is nine, we subtract what? Seven, and we get 
2, so once again we have another Tuesday, right? So, um, okay, so now, now you know how to figure out the day of the week for any date this year. But what about next year? Well, what normally happens to your birthday as you go from one year to the next? It goes up a day, right? Why is that? Well, it's because usually you have 365 days between your birthday, and 364 is a multiple of 7, right? 7 times 52 is 364. So if every year had 364 days, then your birthday would be on the same day each year. That would be boring, and that's why they don't do it that way. <laughs> here at the Carnegie Institute of Science, right? Yeah, that's something to do with the Earth and the Sun, right? But for 365 days, that's going to cause a bump unless a leap year gets involved. So, here, so for 2014, 2014, you would have a year code of 3, and everything else stays the same. For 2015, you'd have a year code of Four. But for 2016, that being a leap year, you're going to have 366 days between your birthday. So that's going to cause a bump of two. So the year code, instead of being a five, would be a six. Notice, by the way, if you were born in January or February, you don't get that bump. And that's why the month codes for January and February are different. That's where that happens. Let's just do one or two more. For 2017, your year code would be 7. But since we're going to subtract 7s at the end of all this, I may as well bring that all the way down to 0 to make it easier. And 2018, we'd be back at adding 1 to that. And so the year code would be 1. OK? And so you can now figure out the year code for any date in the future, you know, just as you go one year at a time. Um, as to where these numbers came from, we start by making 2,000. I chose 2,000 to have a year code of 0. And if you wanted to, you could count. Let's figure out why 2018 has a year code of 1 without even having to uh, count one year at a time. In, if 2000 has a year code of 0, then 2018, the calendar would have shifted 18 times, right? Once for each year, plus once more for every leap year, 2004, 8, 12, and 16, right? We're gonna, those are leap years, so we're gonna, they're going to create an additional bump of 4. And add 18 plus 4, you get 22. And then if I can make the year code 22, but let's subtract 7s. What, what number would I subtract from this? 21 to get a year code of 1. And that's how you could directly figure out the year code. This is going back to your original question for 2018. Now, I know you weren't born in 2018. What if it was 1918 or something? Well, then all you need to know is that the year code for 1900 is a 1. And so for, for any date in the 1900s, we, we treat the year code just like in the 2000s, but we add 1 to it. Right, so for, uh, two for 1918, we just take the 1 here, add 1, and that would be 2. And that would be the year code for that. So you could figure it out. You can figure out the year code that way. Similarly, 1800 has a year code of 3. 1700 has a year code of 5. 1600 has a year code of 7. But 7 goes all the way back down to 0. And we're back to the year 2000. And in, indeed, every 400 years on the Gregorian calendar, the, the, the calendar repeats. So in fact, going way into the future, way into the past, is not any more of a challenge. But it looks that way. Looks impressive. Right? Any other questions on the on the on the calendar? Yes, sir. That's built. So the question was, um, okay, was two thousand a leap year? Two thousand was a leap year, right? Was nineteen hundred a leap year? As it happens, no. The rule is every four years is a leap year, but there's an exception. If the year is divisible by 100, it's not a leap year. 
But there's an exception to the exception that says if it is divisible by 400, it still is a leap year. So 1600, 1600 was divisible by 400, and it was a leap year, which was a good thing because the Gregorian calendar happened in the 1580s, and you know they were going to make this big shift, but it wasn't going to affect 1600. So, so that that worked out nicely. And but then 1700 was not a leap year, 1800 not a leap year, 1900 was not a leap year, but 2000 is. Okay, so and the, the, the year codes, the one, three, five, and zero, factor that all in to the, in, into the calculation. Any other questions on that? Um, on, uh, on those, yeah, last question on that, yeah. Is there, can you express this as a equation? Yes, you can put this using modular arithmetic and come up with a formula for where you input the, the, the month, the year, the date, and, but it's, it's, I think it's a lot easier if you've memorized your year codes to do it that way. But yes. Okay. Other questions. What else? Uh, what else would you like to know? Yes, please. What was that? Oh, can you have the sheets afterwards? Absolutely. You just have to. You just have to come up, and nobody else take those. But anything I, I finish with on stage, you're welcome to. Uh, welcome to have. Uh, or you could buy one of the DVDs, and you know, maybe be a lot easier. Okay. Uh, Ruby, what's your question? How do, I, how do I do math in my head so quickly? How do I add and multiply all that? Let me show, well, so the, the short answer is, and I want to say this especially to you, Ruby, is I did a lot of homework, <laughs> okay? So the only way to get good at math or anything is to put a lot of time and practice into it. I was not born doing these kinds of calculations. Did I waste a lot of my youth thinking about ways to multiply numbers? Yes, I did. I'm proud of that fact. You might call it the product of a misspent youth, right? That'll be my my autobiography. Uh, but the, um, I've never used that line. I'm going to keep that one. So, uh, so but, but just because you practice something, it's also important that you practice it the right way. And in my case, the right way is the left way. What I mean by that is I do all of my calculations from left to right. Right? That's different from the way you might be taught in school. On, in, on paper, they teach you to do the math from right to left, right? You get the ones digit, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and so on. But that's backwards. We read numbers from left to right. We pronounce numbers from left to right. The most important numbers are here on the left, not on the right. More important to know that your answer is a little, bit, little over four million than to know that it ends in seven, right? And yet, we, we, in, when we do the math on paper, we're trained to start with the least important numbers first, give us plenty of time to make a mistake until we get to the most important numbers, right? So if, if you, for lots of reasons, you want to do the math from left to right. Here was the reason that I did it back in those days. It wasn't because of estimation or anything. I just found that by doing it from left to right, I could start to say my answer while I was still calculating, <laughs> making it look as though I was doing it even faster, which is a good thing, right? So let me show you some of my methods. Um, I'll start with squaring, because that's what you saw me do the most of up here. And then if you're still interested, I'll show you how to multiply like any numbers together, OK? So um, give, us a, give us a small two-digit number as our first example. Uh, 51. 50, 51. All right, not the smallest of two-digit numbers, but I'll take it. <laughs> now, 51's not a, not a bad number to multiply, but what number close to 51 is much easier? 50, right. So I'm going to go down 1 to 50. Now, whatever comes up must come down, or whatever goes down must go up. If I go down 1 to 50, I have to go up the same distance to the number 52. So the first part of my calculation is I do 52 times 50. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One is the way I usually multiply a two-digit number times a one-digit number is I do 5 times 50, which is? 250. 5 times 2 is 
10. 250 plus 10 is 260. So when you attach the friendly zero at the end, we get 2,600. But there's another way of doing 50 times 52. We always keep our eye open for things we can take advantage of. And what's nice about the number 50 is that it's half of 100. So 52 times 100 would be 5,200. If I can take half of 52, that's 26, then I get 2,600 that way. I don't know which way was easier for you, but either way you get 2,600. Almost done. That's almost the answer. All we have to add to this, if we want to calculate 51 squared, all we have to add is the square of the number we went up and down. We went up and down 1. 1 squared is 1, and that is your answer, 2,601. Yeah, let's do a couple more examples. I want to make sure you're real comfortable at this. How about another two-digit number, sir? 36. Okay, this time for 36, what's the nearest easy number? 40. So I'll go up 4 to 40, down 4 to what? 32. Let's do 4 times 32 and then attach our 0. 4 times 30 is 120. 4 times 2 is 8. 120 plus 8 is 128 with the friendly zero that's 1280 you can start to say your answer now 1280 and what we add to that is what the square of 4 which is 16 to get 1296 by the way just for the fun of it and I do consider this fun uh, let's try let's try that problem a little differently Instead of going up 4 to 40, suppose for the fun of it you went down 6 to 30. All right? And then you went up 6 to what? 42, a great number. Okay, 30 times 42. Now we do 3 times 42 is what? 3 times 40 is 120. 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 times 42 is 126. So that's 1260. And what do we add to that? The square of 6, 36 to get... 1,296. You get the same answer. Now, I don't know about you, but I think, and I certainly thought as a kid, that that was really pretty cool. That you could take a problem, do it lots of different ways, and if you were careful, you would always get the same answer. And I think that's true of mathematics and the math that I do. I love looking at problems in multiple ways and seeing new, getting new insights to problems by trying them different ways. Okay, now I'm going to give you a problem. And, oh boy, um, I'm going to need, um, I'm going to offer a prize for this one, okay? So um, for the first person to get this problem, I'm going to give one of my DVDs on the secrets of mental math. So um, if, um, uh, anyway, so if I had one up here, I would just give it to you. If not, I'll just make sure I can, um, I will, I, I think there's going to be one that's being brought to me now. But anyway, so um, I want you to try the following problem, and when you think you have the answer, Raise your hand, okay? But no talking, no whispering, no calculators for sure. Put away that calculator. If you can do it in your head, you'd get it faster than the calculator anyway, all right? So it's going to go to the first person to get the next problem. Technically, I should give it to the last person to get the next problem because they need it the most, but we don't, <laughs> but we don't have that time. So I have here, thank you, Toby. I have here a secrets of mental math for the first person who can square, raise your hand, I will point to you, you got to say it right away or I'll point to someone else, who can square the number 97. Okay. 97, okay. Uh, sir, what did you get? 9,409, give him a DVD and a round of applause. Good catch. What did you do, sir? I hope you went up 3 to 100, down 3 to 94. 94 times 100 is 9,400 plus the square of 3, not 7, the square of 3 is 9 to get 9,409. Give him a round of applause. Well done. All right.
Um, anyway, by the way, once you get good at squaring two-digit numbers, and I have to confess, I've been squaring them for more than half my life now, that the two-digit squares have become unintentionally memorized by me. Didn't it sit down to memorize them? I do know them, though. But I don't have the three-digit squares memorized, even though I'm sure at some point in my life I've calculated each one. I don't have the answers memorized. But let me show you. Give us a, give us a three-digit number, and I'll show you how I would square that one. What was that again? 217 squared is 47,089, and here's how. This time, the nearest easy number is 200. I, if I, go, I went down 17 to 200, therefore I have to go up 17 to what? 234. Look, this is one you really can do. 200 times 234. We'll ignore the two zeros for now. 2 times 234 from left to right is? 468, right? That's 46,800 plus the square of 17, which many in the audience know. 17 squared is? 289. 46,800 plus 289. Without even doing this addition, I know that that's going to cause a carry. So I'll say 47,000. Then the eight, there's only two digits of overlap here. 89. 47,089. And once you can square the two three digit numbers, not have them memorized, but once you're quick at them, you can then go on and try and square four digit numbers. Like let's say 5,217. I'd go down 217 to 5,000, up 217 to 5434. Multiply 5 times 5434, 27,000 plus 170 is 27 million. 170,000, I'd say the 27 million, get it out of my memory and into yours. 170,000, I turn into a word like ducks. I'll explain that later. Then I, have 100, I hold on to ducks, 170,000. I add to that the square of 217. So 200 times 234 plus 17 squared is 47,089. 47,089, now I take 089 and make it save up. Take the 47,000, add it to ducks, which is 170, to get 217,089. Thank you very much. But of course, that's just squaring numbers. The real fun begins for me when you're not squaring numbers, because I always square numbers with the same process. But what if you're multiplying any, any two different numbers? OK, let's, let's just keep it low with two-digit numbers here. Give us a, give, give a two-digit number. 24. 24. I love 24. Very composite. And how about another, another two-digit number? 49, a perfect square. Lots of good ways to do 24 times 49. I get 1,176. And how do I calculate the, let me count the ways. So one way, the way I actually did it, was I took advantage of 49 being 50 minus 1. So I did 50 times 24 is what? 1,200. Half of 24 is 12. Right, so 1,200 minus 1 times 24. So I subtract 24. That's 1,100 and something. And the something is the complement of 24, which is 76. Just making change from a dollar, right? 1,176. That's one way of doing it. That wasn't the way I thought I was going to do it. I thought I was going to do it by factoring 24, because 24 is so nice and factorable. We could take 49 times 24 and see that that's the same as 49 times 6 times 4. Then I'll do 49 times 6. 240 plus 54 is 294 times 4. I like factoring because I've now turned my problem from a two-digit problem into sort of a one-digit problem. 294 times 4 is easier than 49 times 24. So I can just rest here if I need it and say, hmm, how am I going to do 294 times 4? I usually do it by 800 plus 360 is 1160 plus 16 is 1176. But 294, that's almost 300. 4 times 300 is 1,200. 
minus what? Four times six is 24. Oh look, we have that same problem again. 1200 minus 24 is 1176. And there were other ways we could have factored 24. We could have done it as four times six. Is that the same thing? No, it leads to a different calculating path. 49 times four times six is a little bit harder. Or I could have done 49 times eight times three, or 49 times three times eight. Or I could have factored 49 as seven times seven. I could have done 24 times seven times seven. Lots of different ways to solve a problem, which is uh, what I love about mathematics. Other questions? What else, uh, what else would you like to know? Yes. Oh, how do I do the magic square? Hmm. All right. You know, magicians don't usually reveal that secret, and there's a re or any secrets for that matter. And there's a reason for that, right? It's not just because we like to feel all superior and everything, but rather it's because we never get the reaction we want. We want people to say, "Wow, that's clever. You are good," but you never do. I mean, how have you reacted most of the time that somebody's explained a magic trick to you? Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> I thought you were good, but pff, I just wasn't paying attention. So I will explain to you how I do the magic square, but just remember how impressed you were before <laughs> I gave you the explanation, OK? That's the deal? All right. All right, then. Let's do the, now somebody, wh whoever asks the magic square, uh, are you willing to do it with your birthday? January 16th, 1945. Okay, January 16th, 1945. That was a Tuesday, by the way. Um, yes, you got that, right? So here, so the first step is to add these four numbers correctly. Make a mistake here and there's no hope, OK? So 1 plus 16 is 17, plus 4 is 21, plus 5 is 26. And I put that number nice and big, not just for the audience, but for me as well. Now, because you've seen this trick before, you know that the birthday not only appears in the top row, it also appears in the four corners. So this number here is going to be what? 16. And that's actually the first number that I write. All right, and this number is going to be what? Four, but that's actually the last number that I write because I don't want it to be too obvious. Okay, <laughs> next I go over here, and here's the only um, thing to remember really is that 11 months out of 12, I simply take, oh, before I give you that, before I say that, there's only one number here you don't want to put here. And that's this number, the number in the third space, the number four. Because if you do, everything will add up to 26 all right, but it'll be the same four numbers in every row and column. It'll be 1, 16, 4, and 5 in some order, and that won't look very magical. On the other hand, the farther you get away from this number, the more likely it is that negative numbers will show up inside. And those aren't very pretty either. I try to avoid them if possible. So all I do, though, is I take this number and I add 1 to it. All right. So normally, if this is a 4, I put a 5 here. The only exception is if it happens to be January, and it is here, that instead of adding 1, I subtract 1. That's to avoid a negative number in the bottom row. So I take this 4, I subtract 1, and I make that a 3. OK, so that's all you have to do. Just add 1 to this number. If you want to make it nicer, subtract one for January. Now it becomes like the easiest Sudoku you've ever tried. Because you know that not only do the rows and columns add up to the magic number 26, but so do all these diagonals and groups of four. So this diagonal is going to add up to 26. At the moment, we have three of the four numbers on that diagonal. 16, 3, and 5 adds up to 24. So what number has to go here? two in order to get 26. Then I go to this group of four. Remember how we were showing almost every group of four, you know, this group of four adds up to 26. Well, right now I have two, four, and five. That's 11. So that means that this number has to be 15 in order to get 26. And then I go to this group of four in the top center. 16, four, and two is 22. That means that this is 
four. Then I'll go to this group of four or this row if I want. 15, two and four or 16, four and one. No matter how you slice it, that's 21, meaning this number is five. Now remember when I told you this group of four and that group of four don't add up. Don't even try or you'll mess yourself up. You could count through this column, but the way the algebra works, these two numbers will always be the same. And these two numbers here will always be the same. So I just slide this number down to get a four. You can check that this column works. Then I do two, three, I go to the middle. Two, three, four, nine means that this has to be 17. Then I do this group of four. 16, four, three is 23, makes that a three. This group of four, 17, three, three is 23, makes that a three. This th for this one, I just slide this down. Your brain's getting tired from all that adding and subtracting. So I save the easiest parts for last. This number will be what? two, just slide it down, and this number will be what? Four, and that's the secret of the magic square. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, sorry, sure. Anyway, ah, uh, too, too much. Other, uh, any, that's enough, thank you. And uh, I, I see that. Uh, any, um, any other questions on the magic square before I switch topics? Yes, sir. How did I come up with this in the first place? Well, I, the, first, the first method I used for magic squares, I read from a magic book that I read in high school. And I performed it that way for a, for a long time. And then around uh, almost 10 years ago, I read, I mean, to believe it or not, magicians have magazines and journals where they describe their own tricks. And in an issue of Genie Magazine, 2003, I read an article uh, that described some new ideas in creating magic squares. And it wasn't this, but I saw how to apply the ideas from that to this. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could, I mean, in the past, I just asked somebody to give me a number, in, like 26, and I'd create a magic square of that number. But I said, wouldn't it be nicer if we could personalize it somehow, start with any four numbers? And um, for those of you interested, uh, if you get the, the MAA has a journal called the CMJ, the College Math Journal. And sometime, I think early next year, um, uh, I have an article that's coming out on how to create a magic square if people give you any three numbers in any three locations. But the idea, the, th this, um, this method was developed by a, uh, a, a junior mathematician who I mentor named Ethan Brown. And as a seventh or eighth grader, he figured out a a method, and we worked on it together to simplify it, and that's what's going to appear in the College Math Journal uh, next year. So this is something that, yeah, I, get, I want to get kids involved. I wish Ethan were here, because uh, he can do a lot of what I'm doing. And, and I want to send that, I mean, Ethan just started when he was 10 years old. He saw one of my uh, one of my talks online, he got my book and DVD, he studied it, and within months he was doing really, really impressive stuff. I mean, not as hard as mine, but more impressive because of his age. Curses. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, yes, sir, question. Oh, thank you for that. So the, the, I, for years, for birthdays in the 1900s, I will write, um, I will write like 19, I'll write 45. I don't want to go 1945 because that 45 is too, such a large number, especially if I have kids in the audience and someone's born in 1998. I don't want to have a 98 up here. That would be lop, make the square lopsided. So on the other hand, in the 2000s, I don't want to put 00, zero in there because that's going to make for a rather boring total. And so you could put any four numbers in here, A, B, C, and D, and it's going to work. I just choose the numbers so as to make the square more aesthetically pleasing. Yes, good, 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 good question. Yes, sir. How 
how do I determine if a three, four, or five digit number is prime? Either with three digit numbers, I just have enough experience with multiplying that I probably just recognize it or not. But that just comes from, you know, the, the product of the misspent youth. Um, on the other, with four digits and five digits, I don't have a, my method of testing is, um, go, go, give me a four digit number, I'll show you what I would do to test for its divisibility. 4577. Seven. Okay, so we all can see that the number is not even, right? It's not a multiple of two. We see it's not a multiple of five just by looking at the last digit. Uh, is it a multiple of three? Well, no, because how do you tell if it's a multiple of three? Add up the digits. Four, five, seven, and seven add up to 23. Since that's not a multiple of three, I know it's not a multiple of three. Now let's get to seven. Now there are some complicated tests for divisibility by seven, but here's what I do. I say if I will add or subtract a multiple of seven from this number to simplify it. So here I will subtract seven and look at the number 4570. Now this is a multiple of seven if and only if that's a multiple of seven. And because, uh, because seven and 10 are relatively prime, I can get rid of that zero and look at 457. Is that a multiple of seven? Well, subtract the seven again to get 45. That's not a multiple of seven, so my number's not divisible by seven. How about multiples of 11? Oh, there's a cool test for divisibility by 11. Do you know what it is? This audience will, right? I didn't know this when I was a kid. Um, you, you, add every other, you add every other number, plus, minus, plus, minus, right? So 7 plus 5 is 12, minus 7 plus 4, 12 minus 11 is 1. And, and in order for it to be a multiple of 11, that number would have to be 0 or a multiple of 11. Right? And in fact, 12 minus 11 is 1 tells me that when you divide this number by 11, you get a remainder of 1. Pretty cool. We learned that about 9s. 11s, not so much. Anyway, uh, let me just do a couple more, like 13. How do I know if it's divisible by 13? Well, let's add 13 to it. Right? If I add 13, I get 4590. Is that a multiple of 13? I don't know. Let's, sub let's get rid of that 9 by subtracting a multiple of 13. Let's subtract 39 to get 420. And now I see 42 is not a multiple of 13, so I can throw out 13 from, from the list. Anyway, in that way, I would eliminate one prime at a time, 13, 17, 19, and so on. And as I'm saying those numbers, I'm, I don't see anything at least up through, oh, 23. I, was, I would say, well, it's not it's 13, it's not 17, it's 19. Then I got to 23, and what did I do? I added 23 to that to get 4,600. Get rid of both of those. So not only is it 23, it's 23 times 199, isn't it? Thank you very much. Wow. OK. So, other uh, great question. I don't think I've ever had the ch a chance of doing that there. Yes, sir? Uh, yeah, going back to the uh, magic square. Oh, yes. You had a choice of 16 or a 4 to put the lower left Oh, you know what? That was me mess. Oh, uh, so, so I always do it in the, this order. I mean, I just 1, 16, 4, 5. Because that's otherwise you'd be going crisscross, right? So, I always, I always do the second digit here and the third digit there. Now I will tell you, you saw me stumbling the first time. I don't know quite, because I, I've, I've been a little rusty, I haven't actually performed the magic square in a few months. I actually started by putting like, uh, I was like putting either this number or that number in the corner. I don't know why, I just had a brain freeze. But then as I got to here, I knew things weren't quite adding up, and I, I said, what, something's going wrong, what's going wrong? Luckily, I had a spare just in case, and by then I had cleared up my confusion. So, um, uh, yes, please. Um, I was wondering about the, the picture you did very early on, the 8, 5, 7, 7, and then the 
The missing digits. Now, okay, now I know because it's a mathematical audience, many of you figured out what it was, and I'm going to give you a chance to show off right now. Finish my sentence. Oh, the missing digit trick, that was easy. That was just based on the magic property of the number nine. 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 Now, what does nine have to do with it? Well, we were just talking about divisibility. You know that a number is a multiple of three if and only if its digits add up to three. With multiples of nine, as most of you know, you add up the digits, and that'll tell you if it's a multiple of nine, right? Here are the first few multiples of nine that I can put up here, right? One plus eight is nine, two plus seven is nine, six plus three is nine. Oops, I have 99 here. That adds up to 18, but that's okay, because 18 is a multiple of nine. So the deal is a number is a multiple of nine if and only if when you add the digits you either get nine or 18 or 27 or 36, you have to have a multiple of nine. Now, I, how, you're probably asking, how did I choose? Now, so let's look at the original numbers that people had me square at the beginning of the show. 79 squared, 61 squared, 52 squared, 53 squared. Are any of these multiples of nine? Let's see, 6241, what do those digits add up to? 13, so is that a multiple of nine? No. How about 3721? 13, no. How about 2704? 13, that's weird, no. 2809 adds up to 19, no. Usually, one of these numbers is a multiple of nine, and I choose that as my multiplier, okay? But I didn't get that lucky. So normally, I have to throw out a number like the year my daughter was born, 1998. That's a multiple of nine, and no, we didn't try for that, but it worked out nicely, right? 1998 is a multiple of nine, but as luck had it, one in 10 chance, the number I was asked to square was, it wasn't, it wasn't eight, what was the number? It was seven, seven, five, eight? I think, I think it was seven, seven, five, eight, or five, seven, seven, eight, right? Five, seven, seven, eight was the number I was asked to square, and I noticed, always good to pay attention to these things, that that was a multiple of nine, right? Five plus seven plus seven plus eight is 27. And I said, oh, this is gonna fool some of the mathematicians here. So I said, now take this and multiply it by any three digit number, right? And call out your seven, so if you have a calculator and you took five, seven, seven, eight, and multiply it by a three digit number, you'll get a six or seven digit answer. Anybody happen to have an answer in front of them? Got one of my assistants here. You, you can do yours too. Take five, seven, seven, eight, multiply by a three digit number and give me six of the seven digits of your answer. You have a seven digit number? Oh, that's okay. I multiply by three. Oh, well, you've got a seven digit answer? Call out six of your seven digits quickly. Three, eight, four, two, three, seven. Three, eight, four, two, three, seven. Okay, good. Um, now, I don't, um, okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more example. What do you have as your numbers? Oh, you want six of them? You have a seven digit answer? Yeah. Call out six of your seven digits. One, six, yeah. two, one, five. Good. All right, let me do yours first. Now, I don't know what your seven digit number is, right? I, I still don't, but I do know this. Your seven digit number has to be a multiple of nine, right? Because you started with a multiple of nine and you multiplied it by something. So the answer still has to be a multiple of nine. So what am I doing as you're calling out those six digits? Adding them up. Six plus one is seven, plus six is 13, plus two is 15, plus one is 16, plus five is 21. So what number did he have to leave out to have a multiple of nine? Six, six right? And that's your, and did you leave out a six? Yeah, good thing. Um, suppose he called out his numbers and they added up to, to 17, then what did he leave out? One, in order to reach a multiple of nine, in order to get 18. 
Let's look at this number that you gave me here, okay? So you called out six of your numbers. Let's see, 3, 8, 4, that adds up to 15, plus 2 is 17, plus 3 is 20, plus 7 is 27. So what did he leave out? Zero. Yeah, 0 or 9. You don't know. You don't know if the numbers added up to 27 or if they added up to 36. So what do you do in that situation? You guess. <laughs> but as a magician, you can do it in such a way that it does not look like guessing. Now, I got lucky again because none of the four people on stage left out a 0 or a 9. But let's pretend that you did, OK? Well, in fact, you did. I don't know, right? So, um, so here, here I've got two ways of figuring it out. You can decide which one you like better. Um, I could say, oh, this is interesting. Um, do me a favor, concentrate on the digit you left out. I'm getting a lot of nothing here. Did you leave out a zero? Aye. Yes, well, no wonder I was getting a lot of nothing. Thank you very much. <laughs> or let's pretend you said otherwise. Did you leave out a zero? Because it seemed like you were thinking of nothing, OK? Concentrate harder. All right, I'll get it this time. You left out the number nine. Thank you very much, right? <laughs> Either way, it looks as though you got it right the first time. Now, if that's a little too uh, sleazy for you, <laughs> then a slightly more honest approach would be like this. I'd say, um, oh, this is interesting. I see a couple possibilities. Tell me, sir, did you leave out an odd number or an even number? Now, if he says it's odd, you know he left out the nine. If he says it's even or a look of panic goes across his face, <laughs> because he doesn't know if zero is even or odd or what. I'll see the look of panic. I'll say, you left out the zero, right? He goes, yes. And you say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Well, the time has really flown here. So I, I'd like to, uh, like to end with a, and I, I've got, as I said, hours and hours of stuff I could talk about. If you're interested, uh, before I launch into my grand finale, let me make two very quick advertisements. Um, one is for my college. Whenever I give a presentation like this, uh, my school loves it when I tell other bright students and parents about them. And I am a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College. Harvey Mudd, if you say it quickly, it sounds like Harvard Med. Much more impressive. <laughs> My grandmother still thinks I'm at Harvard Med. You know. <laughs> He's a doctor, yes. Uh, so um, Harvey Mudd College, it's one of the Claremont colleges in Southern California. We have, we have 750 students, all of whom major in math, science, or engineering. One third of our students go on to get PhDs. It's a wonderful place to go to school. It's an even better place to teach. And uh, I hope I'll, I'll interest some of you in applying to Harvey Mudd down the road. Ruby, are you listening? Yes, OK. Um, the other quick advertisement is, if, you're, if you are interested in learning more about what I have to say about mental calculation, or middle school or high school level mathematics, or more advanced discrete mathematics, uh, or even my latest course on the mathematics of games and puzzles, um, I have these DVD courses out in the lobby. Uh, they range from $40 to $60. They range from 12 lectures to 24 lectures. They're produced by the great courses. They're a lot of fun. And as Michael said at the beginning, all proceeds, all proceeds are going to the MAA. So I hope you find that. If you're interested, they take, uh, they take checks or credit cards and just see us at the table. OK, finally, let me do my grand finale. I'm going to try, I mentioned this earlier, I'm going to try to square a five-digit number. So um, if you have a, uh, let's create a five-digit number at random. How about we take five people along this aisle, if I can get the first five of you or so, to each call out a single digit. That will be, now some of these are MAA folks, so I'll start with you. So if you would call out a single digit and the five people behind, four people behind you, let's create our five-digit number that way. So go ahead. Nine. Whoop. Uh, I'll start, what was that? You said three? OK, and then next? Seven. Seven. Yep. Nine, four, seven. 
37,947 squared. Yuck, I don't like that one at all. <laughs> Lots of primes in there, all right. Let me show you how, right, 37's prime, uh, 947 looks prime, I mean, anyway. anyway um, let me show you how I'm going to attempt this problem. I'm gonna break the problem down into three parts. I'll do 37,000 squared plus 947 squared plus 37,000 times 947 times two. Add all those numbers together and with any luck, arrive at the answer. Now let me recap, thank you, <laughs> while I explain something else. As I do this last calculation, you will hear certain words as opposed to numbers creep into the calculation. Let me explain what that is. This is a phonetic code, a mnemonic device that I use that allows me to convert numbers into words. I store them as words and later on retrieve them as numbers. I know it sounds complicated, it's not. I just don't want you to think you're seeing something out of Rain Man here. There's definitely a method to my madness. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bad job. One last instruction for my judges with calculators. Now, who's got an answer in front of them? A few of you should have a 10-digit number, beginning with one, ending with nine, in between, I don't know yet. There's at least a 50% chance that I'll make a mistake somewhere in the middle. If I do, don't tell me what the mistake is, just say you're close or something, and I'll try and figure it out, which can be pretty entertaining in itself. If, however, I am right, whatever you do, don't keep it to yourselves. <laughs> Make sure everybody knows that I got the answer right, because this is my big finish, okay? So without any more stalling, and I have been a little, here we Go. I'll start the problem in the middle with 37 times 947. Now that's 1,000 minus 53. I'll take advantage of that. Now 37 times 53 is 1850 plus 111 is 1961. The year I was born, 1961. Subtract that from 37,000. 37,000 minus 1961 is 35,039. 35,039, double that to get 70,078. 70,078 becomes kiss scuff. Kiss scuff is 70,078. That seems right, I'll go on. Kiss scuff, okay. Next, I do 37 squared, which is 1369, so I can say 1 billion. Take the 369, oh, that's going to be close. Take the 369, add that to kiss. 369 plus 70, I think there's no carry, so I'm going to say 439 million. Scuff, 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 good. Next, I do 947 squared, scuff. I do 947, that's 900 times 994 plus 47 squared. That's 894,600 plus 2,209. It's 896,809, fizz up if I needed fizz up, take the 896, add that to scuff to get, oh God, 974,809. Good. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed Mathemagics. I'm Arthur Benjamin. Thank you.